tonight, another political party somewhere else, of course, they can't go outdoors, they're indoors. They go indoors because all the people who attend the meeting could come in two maxi taxis. That's why they're indoors. It's a question of numbers. But whatever they do, they could jump high or they could jump low. They can't equal the people's national movement, my dear friends. I want to start tonight by congratulating Nabila Akalu. From Monroe Road, the Akalu family, a family of rice growers, my dear friends, agriculturalists, very well known and very supportive and unapologetically so, very supportive of the People's National Movement. And it's always a pleasure when a young person from Trinidad and Tobago could come on this or any other platform and can say without any fear of contradiction that the PNM has spent a lot of time and a lot of effort in opening opportunities for the young people of Trinidad and Tobago, which means that the next generation is going to be better than the last one, as the last generation is better than the one that went before it. I want to congratulate Nabila. Remind me much of myself when I was your age. In fact, not when I was your age, when I was much older than you. You talk like a Trojan. And we create opportunities for our young people on every platform of the PNM. In every public meeting that we have, a young person is there articulating the perspective of youth as they watch and watch in some instances in awe at the development of Trinidad and Tobago under the People's National Movement. My dear friends, this morning, I went to Jamaica. I was up at quarter past two. We left Trinidad at 6.30. We had a very important meeting in Jamaica today. Four prime ministers, the prime minister of Jamaica, the president of Guyana, the Prime Minister of Barbados and the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, meeting in Jamaica as part of a task force set up by CARICOM at the last Heads of Government Conference in Guyana to discuss the situation in the Caribbean, the financial situation in the Caribbean, as a result of the financial problems that began in North America and spread worldwide. The situation, my dear friends, in the Caribbean is not an encouraging one. But we're not going to go into the details of that this evening. But suffice it to say, it is not only because Trinidad and Tobago has natural resources, you know, but it is because of the prudent management of those resources by the PNM that Trinidad and Tobago, as much as we are seeing our financial difficulties at this time, we are in the best position of any one of the Caribbean territories today. So we got back at half past five this evening. Yes. Yes. So if, my dear friends, you find me a little subdued this evening, it is because I work overtime for the day already. But say what? Whenever you see a PNM audience, and whenever you see one as energetic as this one here in the College of Center City Mall, Man tiredness just recedes into the distance. It energizes you. And I talk tonight, my dear friends, as a political leader who is proud to be among his people, proud to be able to talk with you, proud to see that you are a receptive audience, proud, my dear friends, to see that you have come here this evening with open minds, ready, ladies and gentlemen, ready to listen to the gospel according to the people's national movement. I sat on the head table now for a few minutes and I've been watching two people in the audience all night. An East Indian sister sitting next to an African brother. 
and they've been talking all night. I couldn't help it, my dear friends. I couldn't help but recall that biblical injunction, how good and right it is when brethren can dwell together in unity. As well it might be, because all of us know, all of us know, that wherever differences exist among a people, those differences conspire to divide rather than to unite. True or false? And it is not always the same thing. In Northern Ireland, what is it? It is religion. It is Catholic. It is Protestant. In Cyprus, what is it, my dear friends? It is Greek Cypriot. It is Turkish Cypriot. Nobody is a Cypriot. It, the place split in two. Northern Ireland had a guerrilla warfare for 25 years. And eventually they have come to some agreement that has now subsided. I was in Fiji. I was in Fiji, my dear friends, in the year 1975, 1974. And when I looked at the Fijian constitution, I saw where the native Fijians are given political power in that country in perpetuity. The problem is this, that by that time, native Fijians were only 48% of the population, and ethnic Indians were 52%. So that the majority was kept out of political power in perpetuity by law. And I predicted trouble will break out. You know what happened two years later? A party essentially of East Indians, but led by an African, won an election. And you know what happened next? The army overthrew the government before it took office. And all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, that wherever differences exist among a people, whether it be differences of race, whether it be differences of religion, whether it be differences of class, color, or any other physical difference, all of those differences conspire to divide rather than to unite. In Trinidad and Tobago, 42% of this population today are brothers and sisters of East Indian origin. 38% of this population today are brothers and sisters of African origin. 2% of our population today comprise brothers and sisters of the European, Chinese, Syrian, Lebanese, whites, and so on. And 18% of our society are brothers and sisters of mixed race. More than that, my dear friends, we have Islam, we have Muslim, we have Hindu, we have Christian of all denominations. We have all kinds of differences existing in Trinidad and Tobago. The one thing we cannot afford to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to play fast and loose with any of them. Because if you play fast and loose, not only are we going to accentuate the natural propensity of these things to divide, but we will be contributing in no small measure to whatever arises out of that. And when I got up in Parliament recently, and I said to the member for Karani, he stop that. Come on, talk any daughters just about ethnic cleansing. Stop it. If you feel, if you feel that you're going to get a political advantage by capitalizing on race, you're talking foolishness. Because at the end of the day, nobody benefits from that. Nobody benefits. You see? And therefore I was saying to him, however much of a case you feel you have, you are irresponsible to come to the parliament and to articulate the case in the way that you have done. Right or wrong, my dear friends? Well, all right. Well, all right. Wherever differences exist among a people, the differences conspire to divide rather than to unite. And that is why Trinidad and Tobago, with 1.3 million people, is so difficult a country to govern. You're walking on eggs all the time. You're walking on eggs all the time. If you say, eh, somebody feel that you should have said B because it offends their religious sensitivities. Somebody feel you should say C because it has a hint of race in saying A, and so on and so on and so on. You have to be careful. And those of us who have had the opportunity to lead Trinidad and Tobago for as long as the PNM has been able to do it, we understand that very well. And therefore, whatever we do, whatever we do, we not playing the race card. We're not playing that. That is not for us. The PNM was formed as one of its founding principles was interracial solidarity. And